Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Real Influencers Project. I'm your host, Craig Reynolds, and with my special guest today, Miss Erin Ducharme Waters. Erin, how are you today? I'm doing well, Craig. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. I must say, I think you have the coolest nickname next to Air Jordan because Ice Waters is pretty fantastic. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. That goes when with I, my Ice Waters, uh, Body Works, and Ice. So we just went with that. Nice. Excellent. Well, I think it's fan. When I first saw the, the name on your Instagram profile, I was like, that's awesome. Like, you have <laughs> to play off of that for sure. Um, so, where are you located? Where are you based out of now? Well, you and I actually, let me go back. We met through Nisha Pai's networking group, yes. um, which is such an awesome networking group. If anyone can get involved with that, I suggest you do. It's spectacular. Great people across the board. I mean, not just Nisha, but everyone that's attracted to her there is just a really, really nice place. Yeah, um, so I'm glad. She does a great job with it too, like keeping it like real and comfortable and everybody, it just feels good when they're there. I love it. Yes, absolutely. So where are you based out of now? Where, where are you located? I live in Merle's Inlet, South Carolina, but my businesses are in Charlotte, North Carolina. Aha. So you're back here all the time then. Yeah. yeah. Are you commuting back and forth during the week? Yeah. How long does that drive? Four hours. I drive in on Tuesdays, Tuesday mornings, and then I drive out Thursday nights and I come back. Gotcha. Very cool. Nothing yeah. like uh, a little scenic view as you're driving and then back to the... Are you right on the coast? Yeah. Yep. Oh. That's it's nice. really nice. I mean, but it's all pivot related for, uh, you know, the word of the year, 2020. Right. So, you know, COVID threw us some, some curves. So now we live in one place and work in another for a little while. Gotcha. What, what are the plans? Do you plan on moving your businesses down there as well? Or are they pretty secure where they are now? No, they're definitely going to stay in Charlotte for sure. Gotcha. A any chance of expanding? If you, Because you, you're a massage therapist now, right? By trade. I, I am. So. I'm a massage therapist, and I also own um, a bracelet company called 1111 Collection. Very nice. Yeah. Excellent. So have you always been a massage therapist, or was there something before that? Uh, well, I have many things before that, but I've been a massage therapist for 13 years now. Okay. I love it. I'm, I'm a big proponent of massage. I used to race bikes for a living, and I used to have to get massages every week after the events were over. And my friends would always joke and say, oh, you're so lucky you get to get a massage. And I'm like, not really, because right. you don't know the kind of massage that I get that beats me up. Exactly. So don't get excited about it because I'm not getting a little froofy massage. I'm getting hammered. And yeah. then I feel better afterwards. People are always really excited about the results and really excited when it's over. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's no joke, but it's so beneficial. And it's helped me for decades and for years of, of being an athlete. Um, what, uh, what, what got you into wanting to be a massage therapist? If you've done things before that, obviously you made a, a shift into, into therapy. Yeah. I, um, my little brother went running with the bulls and he ended up getting paralyzed from the neck down and became a quadriplegic. And in Pamplona, he mm -hmm. was running with the bulls in Pamplona. Yep. Incredible. I used to joke with my friends that I wanted to go do that when I could still run fast. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to Spain. I'm going to run with the bulls. And then I got older and I'm like, I'm going to go to Spain and watch and drink wine. Yeah. That was my plan. Well, they, um, they kind of, they ran and then, um, they, in the bull ring afterward, they kind of jumped in to take a really quick photo because there were supposed to be like a certain number of cows were let in and they were told the wrong number. So when that number was on the other side of the bull ring, they hopped in to take a quick picture and they were gonna hop right back out and one of the cows hit him and he landed on his head and snapped his neck. Wow. So um, he ended up being told he'd never be off a ventilator or feeding tube. I quit my job to go through therapy with him in Shepherd Center in Atlanta because they were the only facility that said, we think we can get him off a feeding tube. Probably not a vent, but a feeding tube. So we went there and um, his insurance paid for massage once a week. Saw like how exceptional his progress was after his sessions. And I just started to really pay attention to the days that he, he worked after his massages. It's like, wow, this is so different than it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I just really got interested in kind of like the science behind it. And I always thought it was interesting, but 
I mean, let's be honest, who leaves a 401k to go to the unknown and hope they get clients one day? Like nobody does that. <laughs> Shepherd Center in Atlanta, I didn't have a job. And um, my brother looked at me and said, I know you want to go to massage school. And I paid for it. And you start in May. That's awesome. That's how I made the jump. Gotcha. Um, that's huge. It's pretty, it's pretty wild. I mean, not just from the standpoint of, you know, leaving a quote unquote secure job, because I don't think there's really a secure job that exists anymore. I think people are ready to move people out and move people in whenever it's best suited for the business. Sure. Um, but you believing in massage so much because you saw the benefits that it had with your brother that you're willing to make that jump. How is he doing now? First and foremost, I probably should have led with that. Actually, he is back trading with the bank. He on weekends puts on a weighted vest and runs the stairs at Duke energy building. Come on. No way. I swear. That is so fantastic. It's such good stuff to hear. That is incredible. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Is he still doing any other kind of therapy? Do you, do you work on him now as well or I, anything? I do. Um, but again, the work I do, he's always like, I need to do it on Friday because it takes me two days to recover. <laughs> yeah. The glass of water they hand you at the end is like, yeah, this is great, but I'm gonna, it's still not helping. I need an ice bath. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, no, he's totally recovered. His therapy is done. That is, what, what do they say that, that, I don't want to say healed him, but what was it that connected all these pathways again when you break a neck? It's usually pretty, well, pretty bad. It's like trying to learn a language that you never even knew. So one of the things I personally believe was what did it for him. As soon as he was alert enough, he made them take him off all meds. So all the medicine that was kind of controlling like spasms and things like that, that makes it easier to keep somebody in bed or whatever. Um, he made him take him off all of that. Cause in right. his mind, he knew if they're controlling, if that's being controlled now, how in the world will my body ever figure out how to reconnect? Right. I personally believe that that was the main thing. And then he had these two therapists that just were wildly incredible with him and they just they just kept pushing and he never took a day off he never he never took a day off and that was really it amazing yeah and when you have some of your clients that come in now do you share that story at all or what what how often or how long do you normally see it takes for someone to s turn a corner when they've got something tight or something out of balance when you're working on them it depends if people do the work outside of the sessions, it doesn't take very long. Um, if it's not an acute injury, that's always, that, that depends on how people recover. That's everybody's chemical makeup. That's their, everything will be different. Mm -hmm. But if people do the work, the stretches and the hydration and things like that, it doesn't take very long. It really doesn't. Like I can put people in a place, some people in a place where if they do the stretches and maintain, they could, they could physically see differences within seven days. Interesting. Yeah. That's that. That's also awesome. then. Can you see when someone comes back for the next session whether they've done their work or not? Within one second. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yep. That's pretty amazing. Um, and and obviously, I, knowing I, you the way that we've chatted before, I would think that you've called them out on that as well. Well, yeah, because I am, first of all, I'm expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, nothing good is really cheap, if you ask me. I mean, cheap, right? Some things can be cost effective, right? Sure. But cheap things, um, no. And finding time to put anything together, like, who has time in their schedule? So I keep trying to remind people, like, stretching is free. So if they, yeah, I definitely call them out on it. Yeah. Not that, I, 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 not that I don't like the job security, but I really want people to get better. Which is really, really important too. Yeah. Um, so in the beginning, you also said that you have a bracelet company, 1111. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? 1111 collection came about. I work really long hours. Some days I'm at the studio for 18 hours a day because there's just nobody acts 
and people call me with issues. And some people sometimes will call and say, listen, I have to get on a plane at five. I'm going to Tokyo. I can't move my neck. Can you meet me at three in the morning? Yes. Okay. If you're my client, I will do that for you. Mm -hmm. But at some point in time, I got to the point where I was just so tired and I needed a reminder of why I was doing it. And it was straight up for love. Like I love my family. I love security. I love my clients but I couldn't find anything that wasn't like super cheesy and tacky. And I wanted a bracelet. So I made it. I just made it. And I thought, this is awesome. Every time I look down, I'm gonna have a reminder, like when I'm exhausted, like this is, this is the deal. This is why I'm doing this. And then I surprised my husband with tickets to the Foo Fighters 20th anniversary show at RFK in DC. Whoa, awesome. And it's the first time I ever wore the bracelet. And from that concert, five people texted me and bought them. And I was Very like, cool. oh, I don't actually have a business. I really need to like now make five bracelets. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Right. right. Um, That's pretty neat. And then uh, I whipped those off. And Kent Youngstrom, who I already told him I was going to talk about him because he's kind of you know, everybody uses his name now because he's famous. It's like, <laughs> like, I won't talk about you if you, he goes, just tell the truth. I don't care. And he, <laughs> he came to me and he really like shook up my world and was like, if you're serious about this then do it and don't, don't puss out don't cop out because you have a really successful business. He goes, if you want to do it, just own it and do it. And I got really excited and really scared. And I got as equally scared as excited. So I knew that it was important to do. Yes. And he, um, when he saw I was serious, he set me up with a couple of shows. And um, that's kind of how it went. And every single time I got nervous, he would just call me on my bullshit. Like, you're just making shit up. That's awesome. So that's kind of I mean how. 11 11 works out i mean and, and it's great especially when you're believing in yourself or you're believing and someone else believes in you as well which yeah. is really cool right i mean how nice of a feeling is that yes that's why i, I mean, love what you're doing because and this could come back to bite me but i don't want one more person to try to sell me leggings that i will look like shit in like, <laughs> like i'm not five nine i don't <laughs> you're not I think that the, my friend Wendy, who owns Irma James out in um, Valentine, said it best. She said, all of these influencers um, could have saved these small businesses during this. It's not influencing, it's selling. And that's a huge difference. Well, I, I think that the companies that are working with the influencers, um, they're using them as a tool. They're, they're an advertising tool. Sure. I mean, it, you got to advertise, you got to market your brand, you got to market your business, right? Yep. And I think there's a disguise there where people are being influenced the same way people are being influenced by Gigi Hadid in an uh, in in L magazine. Like you want to see that, you see that lifestyle and you're like, I want to be a part of that. Like, I love that lifestyle. I want that. You're not really buying the product. You're buying the lifestyle. Absolutely. And it's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. Absolutely. But at a time when the entire world changes, if, right. if the whole paradigm doesn't change, then it's just sales. And that's why I love what you're doing because the people that influence people that are doing things is so interesting. It and it's fascinating. It's such a reminder that every single time we're all doing something, we're actually influencing somebody. Yes. Every so time to keep, to keep it real and be honest and reel it in when you're kind of going off the rails because people are watching and people that, are going to do big things and good things. They're watching. They're yes. those, those people that are going to, that are not even sure. Like I didn't know what to do. I was watching everybody and you know, then Kent kind of just reeled it in. Like, and he said to me one time, he goes, unless your job is to get Instagram followers, then stop giving a crap about Instagram followers. Right. 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 I, I don't know how, that that turns over like i've got seventy five thousand followers I, mean, I don't but I, I don't know when you monetize like what's the value of that to someone there's value and i don't know if they figured it out yet but i don't know how that works out and truthfully 
that's not my focus anyway, is to try to get more followers on YouTube or more followers on, on Instagram. I love this project because it's so real and so much fun. And what you do as an influencer in the real world is you help people. You use your knowledge and your experience and you give it to that person. My neighbor across the street, right? They've got a daughter that's three years younger than our son. And we're like, hold on. We know what's going on here. Look at it this way, yeah. right? This is real life stuff. And I love these stories behind the stories. Like how many people become massage therapists because of what happened with their sibling? Yeah. Like that's crazy. And I had no idea it happened in Spain. Like how'd they get him home? Let's go back to that real fast. Um, medevac flight. Goodness gracious. Yeah. He, he was on two medevac flights. We, it was a medevac from Spain to Charlotte and then um, from Charlotte to Atlanta. Wow. He was in Spain for two weeks, then Charlotte for two weeks and then to Atlanta. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, it, does he remember it? Does he remember the accident? He remembers laying in the ring saying, holy shit, I'm in Spain and I'm paralyzed. And that's kind of about the last thing he really remembers. Wow. Yeah. People wow. always say, why don't you write a book? He's like, because I don't remember what happened really. Yeah, I I've gotten knocked out a couple of times racing my bike. I have no idea what happened. Like all of a sudden it's black and you're like, Where did, what just happened? Like wow. there there's a gap. Like I was here and now I'm here. Oh. That's sometimes it's unsettling when you're like, I'm sure. what happened? Like, uh, what happened? Like, so I don't know. It's, I could see how that would be a, a, a challenge. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Aaron, where do you go from here? Obviously you're not stopping. You're, you're, you're moving, you're moving and shaking. I can see it. Well, right now um, I'm working on two different lines with 1111. One is an anti-bullying that I'm working on with, the sweetest little girl, Carmela Prisco. I mean, she is just a doll. And mm -hmm. her take on life at her young age is remarkable. So that anti-bullying line hopefully is going to come out in the next couple of weeks. And we're working on a major justice line with Vanessa and Tony Major. And that is going to start with benefiting the Possibility Project in Charlotte and then move on to different um, social justice um, departments and you know donations that we can do we're really excited about both of those coming up that is fantastic so then we can see you um standing up in front of the the, the room with Nisha Pai's uh networking group at some point speaking about all this I would love to do that with her I yeah that would be fantastic I'm sure and Ice Body Works sure. just moved Ooh, to where we're, we're joining the Huga wellness team and where's that it is um, on the west side in Re on Remount Road. Okay. They're opening Huga Wellness, which is so cool. It's like a conglomerate of um, wellness-focused fitness, which is so exciting. Mm -hmm. um, what a crazy time to open what is considered a gym when it's not really able to open. So there's a lot of growing, you know, growing pain, stopping, things like that. But it's opening right now, and it's really exciting. So That's we just awesome. moved in. We just moved in this month. Bravo. And, you, and you're open. You can, you're ready yes. to go. Yes. Yep. Where can people get a hold of you if they're looking for some, some body work? Um, the easiest way is through the website um, or it's icebodyworks.com or okay. um, they can just look at our Instagram page, which is also Ice Body Works. Excellent. You should from now on just be ice waters. You should go by nothing but ice. <laughs> That's it. Ice. I just ice because it's so good. I'm doing it first. I'm like, I just have to call her ice the whole time. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's so good. Um, well, um, Aaron, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. I, I love your story. I'm sorry to hear the way that it happened, but I'm very glad how it ended up. Um, some of those stories don't always end up that well, but man, it sounds fantastic. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Oh my gosh, absolutely. One of these days we'll get together and grab a coffee as well. And I look forward to that. Me too. Yes, absolutely. So if you guys like what you're seeing, please make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you can always go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe there as well if you don't have time to sit down and watch the video. Um, Aaron, have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you sometime soon. Thanks, Craig. You too.